dear church. Thanks so much for thinking of this sermon series by your synod offices. I'm Laura Barbins and I get to serve as your bishop. And today I also get to serve as your preacher for the day. Many years ago, I went to our community festival. Back in those days, it was called It's Better in Menor. It's a typical sort of community fair, rides, midway games, fried food, and all those community booths. My family and I were walking around and there was a tent with a local church who was doing face painting. Our four young daughters were immediately drawn in. Who doesn't love face painting? Of course, as the children were getting faces painted, the members of the congregation were witnessing to the parents. Here I am, a Lutheran pastor, unbeknownst to these good disciples, and the first question of the good disciple evangelist's mouth was, are you right with Jesus? And being a good Lutheran disciple, I re respond, well, yes, because I'm baptized. Well, baptism isn't enough, was the response. Now, I could use this as an opportunity to talk about how this evangelical Christian was coming at theology from somewhere different than I, or even about how he was wrong. But the fact of the matter is, many of us believe this in our hearts, that baptism alone isn't enough that we must, in the words of Matthew 25, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and imprisoned. That what we do with our baptism is just as important to God as what God did for us in baptism. It makes sense, actually, that we believe this in our heart of hearts because we live in such an action-based, individually activated society. We won't get a promotion unless we prove ourselves. We're awarded degrees just because we aren't awarded degrees just because we are good people. We work for them. We have to earn a living, earn our reputation, earn our right to speak. It is not this way with God. God has chosen a completely different way of interacting with us. And to be honest, it is utterly alien to us. Which is precisely why it's so hard for us to grasp. Not to mention that the writer of Ephesians makes it really hard to understand. So, for the next few minutes, let's listen to the Ephesians reading from the message paraphrase of the same text that I was reading from, or that was read from this morning. I'll intersperse some narrative in there as well. Listen again and anew to portions of Ephesians chapter 1. How blessed is God! And what a blessing God is! God is the Father of our Master Jesus Christ and takes us to the high places of blessing. Long before God laid down earth's foundations, God had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of God's love, to be made whole and holy by God's love. Long, long ago, God decided to adopt us into the divine family through Jesus Christ. 
What pleasure God took in doing this. God wanted us to enter into the celebration of this lavish gift giving by the hand of the beloved son. Do you hear this? How much love and pleasure God had for us even before we were created? We are the focus of God's love. But more than that, the love that God has for us makes up for all our shortfalls. You know that saying, love is blind? Well, I think that love is blind because love fills in the cracks of our faults and indeed makes us want to be better, to live up to the eyes of the ones who love us. So God loves us, takes pleasure with us, and wants us to celebrate with Trinity, to join the dance of Trinity, as the song in our hymnal goes. The writer of Ephesians continues. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we're a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. God thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans God took such delight in making. God set it out before us in Christ, a long range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. Free, writes the evangelist in Ephesians, abundantly free. Do you know what that means? Abundantly free of the penalties and punishments chalked up by our misdeeds? It means there are no more musts. That's what there, that means. No more musts. In Christ, we're made free. Period. And God loves us wholly and completely, just as we are. When we misstep, when we're selfish, when we try to make our own way, when we try to be the God of our own lives, all of it, all of that, loved into perfection by God not by what we do or don't do, loved because that's the nature of God. And do you know where this is guaranteed for us? Well, the writer of Ephesians concludes the section. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. Now, this last verse might invoke two things for you. The first is our baptismal liturgy. When we are marked when we mark the newly baptized with the cross of Christ on their brow, with the words, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. It might also invoke for you the Stevie Wonder song. Sign, seal, delivered, I'm yours. You know that one, right? Come on, you gotta know that one. It goes a little something like this. Ooh, baby, 
I'm signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Now, I know that we can all repeat that refrain because it goes a lot of times in that song, but the lyrics near the end, here they are. Here I am, baby, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. You got my future in your hands, baby, yeah. I've done a lot of foolish things that I really don't mean. I could be a broken man, but here I am with your future, got your future, baby. God has a future in mind for us, a future with hope and a present with hope. And in both of these, nothing but abundant freedom and love. A love that has claimed us just as we are in the waters of baptism and also transforms us into the people that God sees that we can be. But my dear people, there is no more must to reach this blessed place. There's no more when I, then I might be loved. Mm -mm. God has loved us from the very beginning. A love that is so great, so deep, so wide, that we could never do enough to earn it. And thanks be to God that God says, my child, you don't need to do anything more. For you are signed, sealed, and delivered. You're mine. Thanks be to God. Amen.